ME204 Instant Center Analysis of Rigid Bodies To solve general plane motion problems where we have both rotation and translation, we've looked at absolute motion analysis and relative motion analysis. Now let's look at instant centers analysis. Let's look at the wheel example that we looked at before in relative motion analysis. If the wheel on the car is rotating at 20 radians per second, let's determine the speed of the car. Which point on the car represents the velocity of the car? Well, the axle is connected at point C, so point C will be traveling at the same speed as the entire car. The velocity of C is equal to the angular velocity of the wheel times the radius. So in this case, the velocity of the car is equal to 20 radians per second times 1 foot, which is equal to 20 feet per second. What if we wanted to find the velocity of the top and bottom points of the wheel? We looked at this a little bit using relative motion analysis. For the top point, we can use our relative motion analysis equation. The velocity of the top is equal to the velocity of the center plus the velocity of the top from the perspective of the center. The velocity of the center, Vc, is the translation of the object, and the velocity of the top from the perspective of the center is the velocity of the top as if it were only rotating about the center. So we can solve for the velocity of the top by saying that the velocity of the center is 20 feet per second, and the velocity of the top, if the center were fixed and it's rotating about the center, is equal to 20 radians per second times 1 foot, which gives us a total of 40 feet per second. On the bottom of the wheel, the velocity of the bottom is equal to the velocity of the center, plus the velocity of the bottom from the perspective of the center. The velocity of C represents the velocity at the center point of the wheel, and the velocity of B from the perspective of C represents the velocity at the bottom of the wheel if the wheel was fixed at C and only rotating about its center. We can now solve for the velocity at the bottom of the wheel by putting in 20 feet per second for the velocity of C minus 20 radians per second times 1 foot for our rotation, and it's minus because it's going in the opposite direction now, so that we get a total velocity at B of 0 feet per second. Does this seem right? Well, as the wheel rolls along the ground, it's tangent to the ground, and the ground's velocity is 0. So if the ground's velocity is 0, then the tangential velocity of the wheel in contact with the ground must also be 0. So yes, hopefully it does seem right that it's 0 feet per second at the bottom, but then it's twice as fast at the top of the wheel. But let's look at this in a different way. What if we found the location of 0 velocity? Well, we know that that point is at the ground, because the ground is not moving. So here's our point of 0 velocity. It's touching the ground, the ground isn't moving. At this instant, it's the center of rotation. We treat the object as if it were only rotating about that point at the given instant. So let's put a pin there just to illustrate. And we're going to move our angular velocity to show that it's rotating about that point. So it would look something like this if it were fixed at that point and rotating about that point. So we're going to treat it at this instant as if that is what's occurring. Once we know where our pinned point is, we can find the velocity of the other points. For the center point, the velocity of the center is equal to the angular velocity times the radius to the center point from our pinned point. In this case, our radius is 1 foot, so our velocity at C is equal to 20 radians per second times 1 foot, which will give us 20 feet per second. For the top point, the velocity of the top is equal to our angular velocity times the radius to the top of the wheel from our pinned point, which in this case is 2 feet. So our velocity at the top of the wheel is equal to 20 radians per second times 2 feet, which will give us 40 feet per second. This gives us a velocity profile, and once we know that profile, we can find the velocity on the wheel at any point from where it touches the ground up to the top of the wheel. For example, at a point half a foot up off the ground, the velocity would be 10 feet per second and at 1.5 feet from where the wheel touches the ground, 
the velocity would be 30 feet per second. Let's look at this on something a little different. What about the rod example that we looked at when we did relative motion analysis? Let's start it in motion and then stop it right there. We'll freeze the image. At this point, we have some velocities that are occurring on each end of the rod. Velocity is always tangent to the path, and a line perpendicular to a curved path at a given point will always pass through the center of rotation. So if we take these velocities, and we want to find the location of zero velocity, or the point that it's rotating about, then we can simply draw lines perpendicular to our velocities. Where they intersect becomes our instant center. And we're going to treat the object as if it were only rotating about that point at the given instant. So we can treat it as if it were pinned at that point. And our angular velocity for the rod, which was 5 radians per second, can be applied about that pinned point. Now we can find the velocity of any of the other points on the rod by simply drawing a line from our zero velocity point to a point on the rod, drawing a line perpendicular to it, using the length of that line to that velocity times our angular velocity, we can determine the velocity of that point. So what is an instantaneous center of zero velocity? Objects that rotate and translate, that are moving in general plane motion, have a location, and usually it's not on the object itself, about which the object appears to rotate. This location is called the instantaneous center. The word instantaneous is used because the location of zero velocity continues to change. It's not always in the same place from one instant to the next. Instantaneous centers are only used to determine our velocities. So let's apply the instant centers analysis to our hospital bed example problem that we solved using absolute motion analysis and relative motion analysis. Again, the roller at A is moving towards the pin at C, and if A is approaching C with a speed of 0 0.5 feet per second, we want to determine the speed at which the platform rises as a function of theta. The links are 4 feet long and are pin connected at the midpoint. Our first step is to take member AB and draw on it the velocities associated with that member. We know that at point A, the velocity is moving only to the right at 0.5 feet per second. And at point B, the velocity is vertical, straight up. The next step is to draw perpendicular lines to our velocities. So we draw a perpendicular line to A and a perpendicular line to B. Where those two lines cross, we find our instant center. Now we go ahead and label the rest of the image with the information that we have. We have a radius from our instant center to the velocity of A that we'll label as R sub A, and we have a radius from the instant center to the velocity at B that we'll label as R sub B. We know that the velocity of A is equal to the angular velocity of member AB times the radius of A, which is the distance from the instant center to the point A, and we know that velocity is 0 0.5. We can solve this for the angular velocity of AB, which is equal to the velocity of A divided by the radius of A, which is equal to 0 0.5 divided by RA. The radius of A is equal to 4 times the sine of theta. Substituting that into our equation for the angular velocity, we get an angular velocity of AB equal to 0 0.5 divided by 4 times the sine of theta. Now let's move to the velocity at B. The velocity at B is equal to the angular velocity of member AB times the radius to B from the instant center, R sub B. We know that the length, R sub B, is equal to 4 times the cosine of theta using the geometry that we have. Then we can substitute our angular velocity for AB that we solved at point A into our equation for point B, and substitute our radius at B into the same equation to get that the velocity of b is equal to 0 0.5 over 4 times the sine of theta times 4 times the cosine of theta. Our 4 is cancel, and the cosine of theta over the sine of theta gives us the cotangent of theta. So the velocity at b is equal to 0 0.5 times the cotangent of theta. Now you've seen that we can use all three methods to solve this problem. We can use absolute motion analysis, relative motion analysis, or instant centers. So let's look at the steps again for instant center analysis. Our first step 
is for a single rigid body, we want to determine the direction of the velocity of two points on the body and draw them at their respective points. So in this case, we'll have a V1 and a V2. Next, we're going to draw lines perpendicular to the direction of the velocities and extend those lines until they intersect. This is the instant center for the rigid body at this point in time. Third, we determine the distance from the instant center to the rigid body along those perpendicular lines. In this case, R1 and R2, which represent the distance to velocity 1 and velocity 2 from the instant center. Finally, we use the velocity is equal to the angular velocity times the radius to determine the angular velocity and or tangential velocities of any point along the member. In this case, the velocity at 1 is equal to the angular velocity of the member times its radius to the instant center, R1. The velocity at 2 is equal to the angular velocity of the member times its radius, R2, to the instant center. We could also find the velocity at 3 by saying that the velocity at 3 is equal to the angular velocity of the member times its radius to the instant center. And we could repeat that process for any point along the member. What do we do when the velocities are in opposite directions? Well, we connect the tails of the velocity vectors with a straight line. Then we connect the head of the velocity vectors with a straight line. Where the two lines intersect is our instant center. The two triangles that are formed are similar triangles, and we can use those to calculate the location of the instant center. So if we have r1 being the distance from our instant center to the velocity 1, and r2 being the distance from our instant center to the velocity 2, then using similar triangles and proportions, we can calculate what those distances are. So r1 divided by v1 is equal to r2 divided by v2. Our next topic will be the equation of motion in Cartesian coordinates.